Hello everyone, welcome back to Assetto Corsa on Low Fuel Motorsport where I'm still having to punch above my weight in the top split of the Mazda MX-5 Cup. Competition here is incredibly fierce but I'm just about managing to hold my own and my 1.6k rating. In qualifying I produced my fastest lap time yet which has put me P7 but I'm not sure if I can replicate that 220.6 in the heat of battle. And with the three drivers behind all within two tenths it's going to be a real challenge to stay in the top 10. That's my goal though, let's get on track to see if I can do it. And it's go! 20 minutes at the Nürburgring is underway. 24 cars on track, which means turn one is going to get incredibly crowded. Thankfully, I'm starting from the fourth row of the grid, so hopefully I'm just far enough ahead to avoid any carnage that occurs in T1. Now, I got a pretty decent launch when the lights went out, but I have got Marcus Labat on my inside. Labat started alongside me on the fourth row, so I am leaving a little bit of extra space on the inside through T1. And that wider route around will give me the advantage for this left-hander. So it looks like I've held on to my seventh position for now. However, we are going to be put under real pressure, not just by Marcus Labat, but also from Artem Aleshkin in that yellow Mazda behind. Aleshkin has fought his way through past Labat into eighth place. Well, it all got incredibly close through that stadium section. Aleshkin was breathing down my neck. He moved out wide to try and go past me the long way around. But thankfully, I managed to maintain my exit speed and hold on to this seventh position for now. It is not going to be easy. Aleshkin looking like he's in a real hurry to try and carve his way through the pack. And if he gets a better run out of that corner, he may consider a move up the inside into this hairpin at the bottom of the hill. He's certainly poised to make a move here. However, I'm going to resist the temptation to switch lines and defend. I'm going to stick to the racing line. I am in a touch too deep though. Oh, there's contact. We've lost it. Oh, I've managed to hold on to it. I thought I was a goner then. There was contact from Aleshkin behind. I was sideways coming out of the corner. I felt sure I was heading straight for the barrier there. Thankfully, I managed to hold on to it, but I've lost one, two, three positions. Steve Dollymore's got past. Marcus Labat's got past. And Aleshkin has got past. However, I want to fight right back. I want to grab that position back off Aleshkin and move up the inside into this left-hander. When I get there just in time to stop Aleshkin hitting the apex. However, he's still alongside so I can get to the apex on the right. That means I've got to leave space for now side by side in the rearview mirror. There's a car out onto the grass. That was Alexei Tiagov getting bumped out into the dirty stuff. Meanwhile, I'm still side by side with Aleshkin. The chicane is coming up. Can I hold my nerve? I'm going to have the inside line. Will I finally get this overtake done? Yes, I do. So that recovers one of the lost positions. I'm back up into P9, but I'll be interested to see a replay of the contact with the Leshkin. I didn't think the pass was on, but I did run in a little bit deep, so maybe I just left a bit too much of a gap on the inside. Before we do check out that replay, let's go back and look at T1. I made it through safely, so did 23 of the 24 other drivers. Just one back marker getting spun around. For the Nürburgring, one casualty in turn one on lap one is pretty good going. Well, the real talking point of the first lap came at the hairpin, so let's watch that yellow Mazda of Artem Aleshkin. Was there a gap for him, or did he try and drive through me? It doesn't look like the gap was there. I mean, I did run in a little bit hot, so perhaps the gap was there earlier in the corner. Let's ride on board with Aleshkin now, see it from his point of view. And as I run in just a touch too hot, there is a car's width on the inside. However, I am all Already closing it off before Aleshkin goes for that move. I don't think that pass was really on. Well, that too then, and look at the pressure that Aleshkin is applying now. He is searching for any unused inch of track to try and get this overtake done. In fact, he's going off track now as he tries to go around the outside. Now he switches to the inside. There's no room there either. Oh, this is really close stuff. I'm having to work so, so hard to avoid contact between the pair of us, leaving Aleshkin just enough space for the pair of us to get through safely. Aleshkin still applying pressure, though. He's going to try and roll it around the outside through this left 
left-hander, I'm up on the kerb, I don't want to be up there, these cars get really unsettled on these raised number green kerbs, but dear me, Oleshkin isn't giving me an inch, is he? This is incredibly aggressive attacking from the yellow Mazda, we're still side by side, however, Oleshkin is going to have the inside for this hairpin, I think it might be time for me to surrender this ninth position. Oh, and I just backed down, I've hit in the apex then as well as I closed off the corner, I noticed on my radar that Dianne Marinsky was having a sniff up the inside, so I wanted to avoid a repeat of what happened there on the first lap. And it's probably for the best that I did stay out wide because Marinsky was that close. Had I stayed on my original line, there would have definitely been contact and I would have probably got spun out. As it is, I'm holding on to 10th position. Marinsky all over me in the rearview mirror and I'm too hot into that left-hander now. I am all over the place here. Marinsky attacking around the outside. I just grazed that curb on the inside and look how it unsettles the car. The rear stepped out again. I managed to save it, but I've lost a position to Marinsky and I've lost another position to Marcus Gleitzman. Oh, they really are killer curves here at the Nürburgring. In fact, I think they're probably killer curves at any second you take these Mazda MX-5s on in a Seto Corsa. The curves are absolutely lethal if you catch them wrong. And I think Mark Zahed might have just found that out because he was out on the grass to the right. So that does promote us back up into 11th position at the end of a frantic second lap. Let's check out the replay, starting with that big slide when I just grazed that curb on the inside. Now that mistake cost me two positions, but I did get one of them back at the end of the lap when Mark Zahed runs in way too hot into that final chicane. But back to the live action now. We're just approaching the halfway point of the race and I'm on the fringes of the top. 10, sat in P11, but just 0.5 of a second behind Marcus Gleitzman in 10th. And despite that mistake, I'm actually not that far off where I expected to be. I said before the start of the race that it was going to be a challenge to stay inside the top 10. And at the halfway point of this race, I find myself within a second of it. And my race pace isn't too bad either. I just did a 220.7 last time around. So that's pretty much identical to what I managed in qualifying. If I can keep this pace up, I'll be putting Marcus Gleitzman under real pressure before too long. Sadly though, the more I push, the more likely I am to make a mistake. And as we jump forward to later in this lap, sure enough, the mistake came. Once again, it's a killer curve. I'm just gonna graze it on the inside and there's no way of saving this one. The car spins, I'm facing completely the wrong way. I've gotta get out onto the grass as quickly as I can, mainly to get off the racing line so the other cars can get by safely. But this is gonna cost me a bunch of positions. And Thelman has got past, Oscar Gallego has got past, and now Alexi Tiago off has got passed as well. I've lost three places. I'm down to 14th and it could still get worse because now I'm going to be under attack from a left Viana. I'm still down on pace after rejoining from the grass and Viana is going to breeze by up the inside. So now I find myself down into P15. Oh no, we're under even more pressure now. Mark's ahead behind. Now he knows ahead's quick because he qualified ahead of me on the grid. The pressure is really on now and this race is unraveling spectacularly. One moment I'm battling for the top 10 and then the next I find myself in a very real danger that I might not even be in the top 15. Zahad making a move up the inside. I'm going to get boxed in here. Viana is well down on speed but I've got nowhere else I can go now. Can I fend off Zahad through this chicane? I just about managed it. Viana has lost it in front. Viana sliding across the track. Thankfully I guessed the right way and I do at least get one place back. I'm going to end this lap in P14. But yeah, I really should have learnt my lesson from earlier in the race to stay clear of these curbs. I didn't do it in this hairpin and just look how quickly this car let go. Now, when I did manage to get back on track, I found myself down in P15 and in hot pursuit of a left Viana. Now, Viana just ran it in too hot into the chicane. He whacks that curb on the inside. There's no way of saving the car. He tries his best, but he's out onto the grass. So that at least is one position back. Now, over the second half of this race, I was able to gap the drivers behind, which has given me a five second advantage over 15th position coming into the final lap of this race. It's also meant that I'm closing in on the three drivers in front However, time is against me here. I'm not quite close enough to mount a challenge with one lap to go. However, I will switch on the TV cam though because 11th, 12th and 13th are separated by less than one second. It's Ernst Thelman who's currently holding on to 11th, but he is under real pressure from Oscar Gallego in 12th and Alexei Tiagloff in 13th. 
17th. Now, as long as these three drivers keep battling, I've got to hold on to the faint hope that there may still be something left for me. This battle could very well end in tears with half a lap to go. So I've got to make sure I am as close as I possibly can be to pick up any pieces if it goes wrong. Look how close this trio are together now. You can throw a blanket over all three of them. It looks like Thelman is beginning to feel the pressure. He is going ultra defensive into this upcoming left-hander. Gallego having a look around the outside. That might leave a gap for Tiaglov to have a look. They're side by side. Tiaglov and Gallego. There's contact and Tiaglov's run out wide. Is he going to keep it on track or is he going to be out into the gravel? He's managed to keep it on the black stuff, but he is well down on power. That's going to give me the golden opportunity to breeze by and move up into P13 with two corners remaining. Well, that is exactly the reason why I never gave up on this race. Even when I was two, three seconds behind this pack, I knew there was a glimmer of hope that I may at least get one position if that battle came to blows, and it sure did on this last lap. Oh, I've got to just make sure now I don't do anything stupid through this final turn. I wasn't particularly smooth or convincing through there, and Tiagloff has got a much better run, but thankfully the finish line is quite early on this start straight, so I do hold on to 13th position. But yeah, really good race that, littered with mistakes unfortunately, and as a result I end up down in P13 when I really should have been challenging for a top 10 or even a top 8. My fastest lap in the race, a 220.6, so that's identical to my qualifying pace and it looks more than quick enough to have deserved a top 8. Ultimately though, I've only got myself to blame. I knew these curbs were lethal and I didn't stay away from them. So that is most definitely a lesson I need to learn from before the next race. Thank you ever so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.